Hey, this is Tom Nash. And since in my videos, you always get the bottom line first, here it is. The Egyptians just came out and confirmed in no uncertain terms that the Israelis have defeated Hamas, that the Israelis have won the military campaign in Gaza and that Hamas is finished and no longer relevant. Now, if you want to find out why that happened and most importantly, why you won't hear about this in your mainstream media, stick around because I'm about to blow your mind. Now, a few months ago, back in November of 2023, I made a very simple video. And in that simple video, I told you, look, there's one way to tell when Hamas is no longer relevant, when Hamas is finished, that tipping point. And that would be looking at Egypt. Egypt is the key to understanding the state of Hamas. I told you, the Egyptians will not play ball with the Israelis, will not cooperate with anything that seems to be against the interests of Hamas until they're absolutely certain Hamas can't no longer hurt Egypt. I've explained to you that the current regime in Egypt, which is pro-Israeli, pro-US, and against the Muslim Brotherhood, that regime is extremely fragile. There's been a lot of revolutions in Egypt over the past few years. That regime is very, very cautiously held. And if there's one thing that Hamas can do very effectively is team up with the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and screw up and cause chaos in Egypt that's going to destabilize the current regime. And that deal was essentially a bilateral non-intervention agreement, essentially saying, look, we're not going to do anything to help the Israelis to screw you. We're going to stay on the sidelines. On the other hand, you Hamas, you don't get to work with the Muslim Brotherhood to screw up our stability in Egypt. You stay out of our business, we'll stay out, out of your business. And that agreement held for many, many years. And now it is falling apart. And the fact that it's falling apart shows you that Hamas can't hurt Egypt anymore. That Hamas is no longer a threat. And that is why that deal is no longer respected by Egypt. In that video back in November of 2023, I told you the minute that Egypt starts playing ball with the Israelis and the US against the interests of Hamas, that is when you know Hamas is finished. That is when you know the pact they signed with Hamas is gone. Now, five days ago, I told you I smell the collapse of that deal. I told you. Mainly, that was the change of tune of the Egyptians about the potential of Israeli war operations in Rafah, which is the border between Gaza and Egypt. Just a few weeks ago, the Egyptians said, look, if you, the Israelis, you go into Gaza with your tanks, that is like declaring war in Egypt. We're going to freeze the peace agreements. We're going to halt everything. We're going to re-examine our entire relationships. You're not going to do that. And now, just five days ago, the Egyptians completely did a full 180 saying, look, we obviously don't like it and we'll oppose it, but we're not going to change our relationships. We're not going to break the peace agreement because you do that. Now, that's a huge shift. That's a huge change. That's a full 180. And when they did that 180, which was in favor of the Israelis and completely against the interests of Hamas, that turned the light in my head, basically saying, well, Hamas no longer poses a threat. They've done what I think shows me that Hamas is finished. But now what happened over the past two days completely seals the deal. If there's any doubt, any room for a Brett Favre, Hail Mary into the end zone, that is now gone. Because what happened over the past two days is a complete confirmation that Hamas is no longer relevant, that the Israelis have won. It's just a question of time until your mainstream media outlet tells you about it. Now, look, about a day ago, a leak came out saying that the Egyptians are building camps on their side of the border to house refugees from Gaza. Now, seemingly that would be a huge non-event. What's the problem, Tom? It's the most natural thing in the world. Why would that be a huge issue? Well, because Egypt historically and throughout this entire war have said they will take zero refugees on their land. The official excuse was that they don't want to participate in the displacement of Gazan civilians from Gaza to Egypt. So they don't want to help get the poor Palestinians out of Gaza and into a foreign land. That was the official explanation. The actual explanation is kind of more nuanced than that, which is, number one, 
they definitely don't want any Muslim Brotherhood members, which is what Hamas is, in their territory, especially in Sinai, which has a lot of loss of governance issue for Egypt anyways. And number two, displacing Palestinians and helping the Israelis to displace Palestinians is a huge no-no for Hamas. That would trigger a harsh response from Hamas towards Egypt. So the fact that this leak came out was a huge warning sign that Hamas is no longer a threat. Now, the Egyptians initially declined to comment, then they completely denied it. And then when they were presented satellite imaging showing the construction of these camps, they said, well, look, we are building them, but we're only building it as a contingency in case the mob goes through the wall, through the border. And we only have room for 100,000 people, not more. There's 2 million refugees in Gaza. The maximum we'll take is 100,000. And that's only in case they literally bust through the wall. Now, that's the word they're saying. And that's the official statement, which is there to serve the Arab narrative because nobody wants to participate in the displacement of Palestinians from Gaza to anywhere else. But the reality is quite different. You see, the reality is that if people start moving through the border in a huge mob, who is going to stop them when they get to 100,000? Is there a guy with a counter that's going to click, click, click until he gets to 100,000? If 2 million people are going at the walls, ain't nobody stopping at 100,000. So what's going on here is that Egypt is literally playing ball with the best interest of the Israelis and the US, which is to help the Israelis go into Rafa and clean up the rest of Hamas, do its mop-up duty in Rafa by taking some of the civilians, probably all the civilians temporarily into Egypt, and then once Hamas is cleared out, putting them back in Gaza. Well, something happened over the past 12 hours that seals this even more. In the past 12 hours, the Egyptian foreign minister, who was just the mouthpiece of the regime, came out and said, we don't think Hamas represents the Palestinian cause anymore. We don't think that Hamas represents the Palestinian consensus anymore. And we have a lot of questions about how Hamas got to power and stayed in power for so long. And I think the funding of Hamas needs to be investigated. Who funded these terrorist murders? So for Egypt to come out and say that proves beyond any shadow of a doubt that this thing is finished. It's done. They've completely went and did a full 180, not just collaborating with the Israelis, not just playing ball with the US, not just doing things against the interests of Hamas. They're now fully going at the neck of Hamas officially by a foreign minister, literally saying that Hamas are assholes and they're traitors, murderers, and they should have never been in power in Gaza. You see what happened over the past few months and mostly over the past few weeks is that the Israelis completely cleaned out every single region they went into. They started with the north, then they went south, then they cleaned Han Yunus out, and now Hamas has one stronghold left. One, that's it, which is Rafa. Once Rafa falls, the game is over. The problem is that you have a lot of refugees that are housed in that particular region. And that makes a military operation very, very complicated. Ideally, as a military, you would like to avoid it, but the Israelis cannot. They literally can't afford not to go in there. Even if they wanted to do it, they can't. Because Rafa crossing is where the leak happened, is where all the smuggles of RPGs and the bombs and the IEDs and the AK-47s and the grenades, all of this came from Egypt through the Rafa crossing. The Israelis have to take that border and have to take the Philadelphia corridor, the Philadelphia route, which I told you about which that little strip of land between Gaza and Egypt, and close that loophole. Without closing that loophole, the entire war is meaningless for the Israelis because Hamas is going to rearm itself to the teeth. And the Egyptians are not idiots. They understand that the Israelis will go into Rafah. They have no choice in their mind. And if they go into Rafah, they're going to do in Rafah exactly what they did in North Gaza, in South Gaza, and in Hanunis, which is clean out Hamas. Because Hamas isn't particularly good when the people on the other side are actually shooting back. They're more equipped to handle, you know, civilians and babies and that sort of thing. So when the Egyptians figured that out, they basically said, look, now we have two choices. We can stick to the original pact we have with the Hamas, which now serves no purpose to us because these guys are dead men walking. 
or we can flip and help the Israelis and help the U.S. and go with the winners. You know what they say about the Egyptians? The Egyptians always wait the finish line waiting for the winners. And the fact that they went with the Israelis right now and with the U.S. shows you who's winning this war, which is, of course, a huge loss for Iran that's going to lose a huge proxy force in the Middle East. And it's a huge loss for the Hezbollah because they haven't intervened in this war and now they look like assholes for not helping the Hamas. There's a lot of moving parts in this story. It ain't over yet. Just one little piece of a huge puzzle. And of course, if you want to see more of that puzzle, if you don't want to see the world through a little straw like you got on mainstream media, stick around because we have a lot more content coming up. And if you want to support our channel, since most of these videos are not fully monetized, you're more than welcome to join our Patreon to support the cause patreon.com forward slash Dom Nash report. Thank you for the people who joined already. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.